Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Tamara Studio. We will get started in just a few minutes. As usual, please let me know in comments where are you from, where, where are you watching, how are you doing, how is the weather. We have beautiful Saturday morning here in Houston. Finally, the heat is a little bit less. It's really nice out. It's actually even cool at night, so we're enjoying the, the early fall, I should say. I don't know. In some countries, that will be summer, but for us, it's early fall. So um, let me know in comments if you can see and hear me okay. I have, I have the chat open right here. I will leave everybody a word. I'm going to check my settings real quick. Yeah, I think we're good. Seems like everything's working. I guess everybody's getting ready um, to paint. Nobody's chatting with me. <laughs> so I'll tell you guys real quick about um, the um, my setup today. So I have a sheet of, of watercolor paper, a big one. Uh, this is a uh, Canson brand. It's that inexpensive paper. I used it for one of the previous lives when we did freehand cats. Uh, so I'm using it again, just a lot of room for me. I don't have to worry about stuff not fitting or anything. So this is not cotton. This is wood chip. Uh, you, I'm sure you've seen these. They're sold with blue cover, those um, uh, pads of paper. So this will be fine for today. You can use Bristol, you can use hot press, you can even use like printer paper. Today doesn't matter. Today is all about uh, brush control and uh, just having some fun painting without any preliminary drawing or anything like that. So we're not restricted to, you know, painting within the lines and mixing complicated colors so none of this today so it's saturday morning we're just going to relax and have fun and just paint um, and improve our brush handling technique hopefully so um yeah i see more and more people are joining so still no comments in the chat hopefully guys you can hear and see me okay but i would think somebody will let me know if you couldn't see me <laughs> my computer says everything's fine so uh, i only have one color watercolor let me put it where you can see it uh, this is um, mineral violet by holbein i just took it out of my palette and i was saving it for something like this for just exercises um so all right, Linda, thank you. Ready for another great tutorial. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, today is going to be, you know, no pressure. So we will all have a good time, hopefully. Um, I'm going to use this purple. If I don't like it, I might switch to something different. I did a little test beforehand for the birds, so I can post something. So I used indigo for this. I think it looks pretty good, but I think color doesn't matter. Just whatever color you have a lot of and you know you enjoy using, just use that. And we will only need one brush. I think I'm going to use my Asian art brush here because you've seen it in previous tutorials. When I wet it, it becomes very pointy. So it gives me a good variation between, I can cover a lot of uh, space with it or I can do finer details. It does hold a lot of water and a lot of paint. 
Uh, so we'll see how the painting goes. I might switch to something different. I'm thinking I want to try my flat angled brushes as well for this. So it might be a good idea to actually try, you know, a chance for us to try different brushes and see how they behave because that, that's what it's all about today. It's brush control, freedom, and um, just uh, painting without thinking about the results or worrying about how it's going to turn out. So just freehand exercises today. All right. I'll put this down for a minute. Uh, we have, let's see, it's, uh, my phone says four minutes till 10. So we'll give everybody time to join. And if you guys were not planning on painting, maybe you can grab a sketchbook or some watercolor paper and uh, actually paint because it's not going to be difficult. You won't have to, you know, look at the screen, trying to catch every brush stroke. It will be, you know, I will keep the reference on the screen so you'll be able to see it. So if you were not planning on painting, just think about it. Maybe you do want to join me and paint today. And the reference photo, I made a composite. I found a bunch of um, pictures online and I combi combined them. Uh, it's posted in the community tab on my channel. So if you click on my picture on, on the channel, it will take you to the channel page and there are, there are tabs on top and it will say community. And if you go there, I posted this, you can see that photo. And to save it, you can right click on it with your mouse and um, save it on your computer or print it out or whatever. We, you still have a few minutes to do this if you haven't done this. The subject is crows. So I thought it would be, you know, Halloween is fast approaching. So I thought it would be a suitable subject. Um, but just in general, knowing how to paint birds can be very useful because sometimes you paint a landscape or a seascape or something and you want to add some seagulls or some birds in the distance. It, it really livens it up. So, so we're not scared to do that and we know what the birds look like. I thought this will be a good subject uh, to paint, to practice. And at the end of the session, I'll show you how I will add birds to the landscape. I have one right here. All right, as usual, please uh, feel free to leave comments in the chat section throughout the, our session today. I will stop from time to time and take a look and I will try to answer everybody. And of course, after uh, the live session, I go through all the comments and I try to respond to everybody. And as always, if you have suggestions for future sessions, I have a few planned, but I can always change. I want to do what's interesting for you. I want us to paint together. You know, Saturday morning is a great time to do something creative. So if you have some suggestions for future ones, something you want to learn or to see, please let me know in comments as well in the chat. All right, people are starting to arrive. We have one minute left. Arlene is joining me from Maine again. Okay, she, she says she's just going to um, to watch and then paint. That's fine. Yeah, if that works better for you, that's that's great to, way to do it as well. So, <laughs> Amber has crows coming to visit her. Wow, that's amazing. We had the raccoon in the backyard who was eating our citrus trees. So that fellow had to be relocated outside of the city and so hopefully we have animal life in in big city as well oh thank you teresa she says i love these sessions thank you so much so if you have suggestions for future ones make sure and let me know because i can do different things and you know we can all have fun and learn at the same time you know in my main goal here is not to actually teach you something, you know, I, I just thought it will be fun to paint together and see what everybody's doing. And I know you posting online afterwards and I can see, you know, all different interpretations, just amazing because every artist puts their own twist on every single painting. All right. 
people are joining us real fast now oh wow we have south africa welcome gabrielle all right let's get started guys so today's session like i said will be free hand exercises and we will be painting birds which can be just fun exercise to do just to loosen up to learn to control the brush a little better just to paint something on a blank sheet of paper without any drawing without being constrained by a drawing uh, also knowing how to paint birds is useful if you're painting landscape or seascapes or even urban scapes uh, so today we'll be just relaxing fun uh, and having a good time just painting freehand this is my reference i think i'm ready to start guys if you're ready because um not too much to say to <laughs> to open this session just can get started and start painting like i said i will start with this round asian art brush but a uh, good idea to have a few brushes ready and maybe um, you know switch uh, during the session between because we have quite a few birds here and um, you know because we are uh, practicing brush control it might be a good idea to try different brushes and have a better feeling how they work and you know how much water you need how much paint how they behave during painting I know this fellow sheds <laughs> so I'm always keeping an eye on, on fibers sticking out of it even though I love this brush uh, so, you know, it's all about uh, just freehand practice today. Let me put the reference somewhere where you can see it. Like I said, just one color. I'm using this leftover purple mineral violet uh, that I had any color that you like. Doesn't matter. So before we start, let's concentrate. Take a deep breath, kind of roll our shoulders. It's very important to be relaxed, you know. I prefer to stand when I paint. Um, if you don't feel comfortable standing or you don't have room or something like that, um, standing gives you a lot more freedom of movement. But if you want to sit, make sure you're not sitting like this and painting, right? So keep your uh, paper a little bit away from you, roll back your shoulders and relax your arm and start working. So you can see what you're doing and you're not all you know tense and crumpled up because i know it's nerve-wracking and i'm nervous to start myself to see a blank sheet of paper but it doesn't matter if we ruin it it's fine if paint runs over who cares so we will just start painting i didn't spray my paint so i'm going to wake it up with a little bit of water and i'm trying to paint pretty intensely right away i'm not really diluting the paint very much I've added just a touch of water, but um, I'm using a lot of pigment. You know, the crows are black, so we need to have some intensity right away. And I tend to paint very intensely anyways, so I like to use a lot of pigment in my painting. I don't really paint those kind of delicate, transparent watercolors, but everybody's style is different, so we'll see what works best for you. All right, and I'm going to start with that crow. So I'm looking at the reference photo and I'm trying to create a shape. So don't outline it, right? Because that will defeat the purpose of this exercise. Just try to fill in the shape with your brush. The, the beak didn't turn out because the brush is too big, but that's okay. I will show you in a minute how we're going to fix all that. And notice guys how paint runs off the brush. That will depend on the size of the brush, on the shape, on how much water you pick. So watercolors, so many factors are kind of coming into play that it's hard to give an um, exact recipe, you know, pick up this much paint and mix it because it's just too many things that are different. But that's why we're doing this because we want to learn and we want to, to learn that control. There's the other wing on the back here. And another 
thing that we can do is pick up a little more paint and if we wanted to give our sketch a little more interest definition even though we don't have to we can do drop more paint into wet paint so that teaches us paint control as well because uh, when we paint we we do this a lot right we um at least in if you watched my demos you will know i often don't mix paint on the palette i just drop in different colors so this uh, this shows you how to do that as well. All right. Hi, Julie. She's in Houston. Hello, neighbor. Are you welcome, Linda? Sure. I, I'm having fun. So hopefully you guys are too. So here's my first bird. Let's keep going. And, you know, watercolor is interesting because it seems like you picked up a lot of paint and it's going to be really dark. But when you start applying it, it's actually pretty light and transparent. And that's why these exercises are also important. Because after a while, you will figure out what's going to happen before it happens, right? It's not going to be, you know... I was trying to do one thing and it turned into something quite different, it will be a little more predictable. You know, people, a lot of artists say, you know, watercolor is so unpredictable. I did what I told you not to do. I did a contour, so let's try painting shapes. So switch my brain to shapes. Yeah, people say watercolor is unpredictable to a certain extent, but the more you paint with it and the more you practice, the more predictable it will become. All right, scary fellow here. Let's do, I'm going to go back to the top. All right, this shape this one is really, I think, will look good in a landscape or something like that. So let's practice. Try to do this. Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm going to turn the page because it's in my way. Okay, where do I want to start? I'll start with the shoulder, I think. I did paint this week, but I still feel a little stiff. So hopefully as we go, I will loosen up and you, you will too. I don't know if you guys paint every day or just on the weekends. I try to paint every day, but sometimes, you know, it just doesn't happen. And I also wanted to draw your attention to uh, the way I hold the brush. Something to consider. I know everybody's preferences are different but I think it's a good idea not to hold the brush too close to the to the bristles so I tend to hold my brush at least halfway down the shaft uh, then the handle uh, I think that actually first of all you can see what you're doing because if you hold it like this like this you can see the tip right so you're painting something that you can see. When you hold it a little bit further away, you can actually see the brush movement. And also, um, when I paint, I kind of move it with my fingers. So that gives me more, pre more precise movements. If you hold it like this, you're kind of clenching your wrist and you're moving it with your arm, which is a lot more, a lot harder to control. And, um, you know, that decreases the precision of your movements. But if you used to holding brush certain way, um, it will probably take you a little bit of time to kind of learn something different. So just see if you, if it's, you feel it's necessary and at least try it one more time and see how you feel that my suggestion. So here's another one. Let's do this one. Also very good 
pose, good bird to have in our arsenal for future paintings. I'm sticking to the round brush for now, but we'll see. Maybe I'll switch after this one, try something different. That's what I'm talking about. The hair is starting to come out. <laughs> Let's try to paint shapes. We don't even have to squint because all those birds are black. We can see them really well on paper. Sometimes when we paint, you know, to see better, to, to avoid the details, but these guys don't have any details really. And the second wing is somewhere there. And like I said, guys, you don't have to have a big sheet of paper, paint or paint everything on the same sheet, but uh, you can even just use, you know, your sketchbook and paint each bird on a separate sheet or two on a sheet, something like that. All right, I have this guy down on the bottom. No questions so far? Let me see. All right, we have Canada, we have Ohio, Missouri from the States. Watercolor unites people all over the world. It's just amazing to see. Okay, let's do this fellow. He, it's the angle is a little different, but we will get it figured out. I'm not thinking about, you know, this is the bird's head or the wing, at least try not to. Um, I'm trying to paint shapes, like I said. While I'm doing this, guys, I wanted to tell you, I'm trying to think what I was going to tell you, some information that I have. We extended the sale on my Painterly Pets class for one more day. So today's the last day. If you were thinking, I showed you some artwork, and if you were still thinking about getting it, today's the day to get it. It's hundred dollars off, so it's twenty nine ninety five. And tomorrow, I am going to publish a new class. So I'm very excited to give you this early announcement. I have a couple things to do for it, but um, I'm hoping tomorrow it will appear on my website, and the class will be about watercolor greeting cards. So we're approaching the holiday season, and I thought it was time to share some ideas, some suggestions for fall and winter cards. So if you guys into painting handmade cards, uh, hopefully you'll check out that class tomorrow. And everybody who is on my mailing list will get a notification. If you're not on my mailing list, uh, you can go to my website. It's right here, kaseniaanis.com. And on top there is, a, uh, first of all, there are a couple of eBooks that you can download for free about watercolor breaststrokes. Speaking of watercolor breaststrokes, I have a, an eBook uh, where I talk about different application methods for watercolor, and there is also light and shadow ebook where I um, help kind of it's it's brief and it kind of gives a summary of how to paint light and shadow with color. So if you're interested, download those, or you can just on the bottom of the page you can sign up for the newsletter. I don't send any you know spam or anything, no no irrelevant stuff. I just notify you about events and about new classes. So if you want to do that. So new new class is coming tomorrow. I'll show you some examples in just a second. This guy bothers me. <laughs> I'm going to drop in some paint. All right, guys, I switched to flat angled brush. Uh, I haven't used this. I just want to try it and see how, if it's any different from a round brush. So if you have different brushes, maybe a small flat brush will work. Maybe if you have like a mop brush, you might want to try that. Uh, so this is a dagger brush. If you have a little bit bigger dagger brush, uh, try that. So 
this is not about do this this way, right? It just try different things and see what works. Hold the brush closer, a little bit further. Hold it maybe very far away and see what happens. And you can paint these birds over and over again, right? So uh, this is all about freedom. Let me look at the comments. Arlene says, really like these exercises. Okay, yeah, I can come up with a few more things. Uh, so um, I think these are very important. I actually started doing this on my channel. I did some people in different poses. And I know a lot of artists are kind of intimidated painting people, but I don't think it's any different than painting a bird or a human figure, you know, it's just a shape. So maybe we'll do some of those. I'll find some reference and we can practice that because also in landscapes and urban scapes, it's very important to add people, right? So they don't look like they deserted and everybody left, uh, especially in urban scapes, I think people are important. And uh, if you have a few shapes kind of in your toolbox that you already practiced and you feel comfortable with, it will be very easy for you to add people to, to your urban scapes. So yeah, thank you, Arlene, that's a good idea, um, good uh, comment, and I will try to find some more subjects for this se sessions like this. Uh, the size of the brush, uh, yeah, it's all about water and paint control. So the size of the brush does matter and it needs to correspond to the size of your paper. Okay. Somebody's in um, Oregon watching. All right, guys. Sorry, I'm reading your comments. So I, I don't mean to just stand here and be silent, but. All right. Let's paint this fellow. I'm going to just hold my reference. So working now with a flat angled brush. And I'm using the, the tip to do the, the feathers, right? So it's a little bit different than using a flat brush. But it still works, I think, right? A little bit harder to do the small details, but it still works. So let's add a little more tone. And I'm thinking, you know, if you wanted to use a couple of colors, that would be good too. If you have your palette open and then drop in something different, like maybe darker color of the same hue or something like that, same family, that will be good too. Yeah, the flat brush will be a little bit trickier to use because see how I have to go over again and um, add the smaller details separately. Okay. Um, how much time we have? Okay, we have plenty of time. Um, let's do the sitting one just for variety and then we'll I'll paint this one a little bit bigger. Let's see how I want to do this. Uh, maybe paint him, yeah, over here will be fine. So I'm doing the sitting one, the little one. Fill in the shape, try to paint the shape, not the outline. And there is a branch. 
those branches are a good chance for us to practice dry brushing. So brush after you kind of used up all the paint and water, you can really do those textured brush strokes. So that's a good thing to practice as well. And I'll show you guys in a second how to fix. Um, see, I painted too much here and that's why we need our opaque white. Hopefully there are no watercolor purists with us today who will be against using opaque white. I always use it and I tend to do to make my paintings kind of uh, mixed media for the most part. I like to use other materials besides watercolor in combination with them. All right, this is the sitting bird. No questions so far, guys. We're, we're all on the same page. You're all happy painting, relaxed. Filbert brush, yeah, this will be interesting. Uh, Sandy, yes, uh, you just go to the same link on YouTube and after the session it will process for an hour or so and then you can watch it. You can watch the replay. So don't worry about missing the beginning. Yeah, the, the whole session will be available. Yeah, Michelle, don't don't worry about it. It's it's just it's going to be just a YouTube video. It will be in the live session on my channel. And I know some people chose not to paint, so they will be watching the replay. All right, let's do the big guy. Where should I put him? I think this is dry. Um, so I'm going to do this big crow. So it will be bigger movements, bigger shape. Uh, we can add a little more variety to it. So let's move on to this one. This will be fun. So here I'm trying to vary my brush strokes even more now that I warmed up. This is, you know, that's what I call this. It's a warm up exercise before we start painting because we sometimes feel very kind of stiff and restricted and you're wondering, you know, how I'm going to paint. Sorry, I don't know guys if you can hear that I have helicopter flying over my house. Um, so if you feel like you're just too anxious and can't get started, just take out a sheet of paper, and a, a cheap one, and just paint a few shapes and that will kind of wake up your muscles and your brain and, you know, it will be much, much easier for you to start and not worry about messing up your good paper and messing up your painting. Okay, so I want to do different brush strokes and I want to do kind of more, I turn my brush on the edge, so I'm trying to vary the brush strokes. Adding more paint in darker areas. This goes pretty quickly, guys, so we might make this session a little bit shorter. We don't have to, I don't want to take too much of your Saturday morning. So quick exercises quick and effective. The tail is dark. And let's paint the legs. Again, keeping my brush sideways and on the tip. Okay, and here's dry brushing. So I'm going to take a piece of um, paper towel and kind of get water off my brush, mostly from the base, right? Because that's where the water mostly is coming from. And hopefully I can do some, no, some more needs to be removed. Yeah, so here I really like that dry brushing effect. So make sure and try that as well. for the branch. Maybe for the crow itself, crow itself too. 
Alrighty, so here's the big guy. I feel like his tail is too thin. Maybe a few more here. Okay. Now, another thing I wanted to mention, guys, in these exercises, um, you see how if you do a little bit of advanced planning and you position them all on paper, kind of in an interesting way, this can actually be a nice painting. I think this can be even framed. I moved this away, guy. Maybe you're still painting. Let me put this back. Yeah, this big crow. Uh, what I want to say, uh, so this could be a nice, interesting painting. Um, if some, you know, kind of, we see that a lot in um, like Chinese traditional painting, where it's just a, you know, piece of rice paper and there are different animals in different poses. Um, I don't remember the name of the artist, but he did horses in different, in kind of movement of horses. Uh, so we can kind of go channel that vibe and go that way. Uh, so first thing we need to do is maybe find a little more precision in these shapes, if you wanted to, you don't have to, but I'm going to just grab my Dr. PH Martin's pen white ink, which looks great on watercolor paper. It kind of blends with the paper very easily. I'm going to get another cup and just put a little bit I'm going to use my dagger brush. You need a small brush for that. So here's the brush that I will be using. I'm just going to grab a little bit of ink. And don't dip dirty brush in the ink, right? It's always better to take out a little bit in a container or even on just on your palette. And let me go and look at my crows again. And we can add like maybe an eye and see how the, the beak is too long, so we can give this a little bit of a fix. Maybe kind of a few more lines. Maybe even on the wings will be good. So just look at those birds, and this really bothers me. <laughs> I'm just being a little obsessive, but I want to fix this. and. White ink, I think, is perfect material for that, the way to go. I don't see the eye, but I can paint it just schematically. It looks really evil. So I made kind of a mess here. Maybe brush stroke or two to separate my color a little bit. Maybe here too. I'm going a little overboard, but I can wipe that. Okay. Maybe on this one as well. Don't you think it's necessary, guys? I think it looks better. But again, if you have time and inclination, it's totally not a requirement for success of this exercise. The, the main thing is to work with the brush and get better control of the brush. I remember when I started painting with watercolor, I was so frustrated because I would want to paint something and it just, I couldn't control the brush. It will put brush strokes wherever it felt like. And after I did these exercises, I could tell that my control really improved. So now I can actually paint what I want to paint <laughs> instead of my brush doing whatever and sleeping all over the place. And we don't use our motor skills quite as much now. You know, we don't really write that much. At least I know I don't have to, um, but it's important. So it's important to do something special to keep our skills sharp. Okay, let's look at this guy. Yeah, he's, I fixed his nose a little bit, but he still looks a little wonky. Okay, here I definitely did way too much on the beak. And this is brush control too. It, it teaches you to use opaque white and you know, how much to pick up, which brush to use. So all this, all 
that we're doing today is very important and it will be it will improve your watercolor painting for sure I can guarantee that and this guy looks too scary let's soften him a little bit the wings are okay separate the feathers a little bit yeah that's where I was using a round brush so the brush strokes were really thicker okay and let's look at this big guy he's got an eye there somewhere maybe we can give him some more texture even with this let's see what else uh, working with ink is of course best when th your watercolor dried but Sometimes when it falls on wet watercolor, it looks good too, because it mixes and then you don't get very bright white, but you get kind of subtle lightning, a subtle kind of accent. Um, so that can be good too. I'm going to give this fellow another wash. I know I'm kind of starting to fiddle with stuff, but I just want to, you know, have a few minutes. So I want to finish my painting. He, I didn't paint him exactly as a shape and I think he needs to be more of a shape. Alrighty, these are my crows. Um, by the way, another thing we can do, let me show you, that I think could be really interesting is to um, connect all these little sketches. I'm now kind of moving into finishing stages of the painting. Again, this is optional, but I think it could be fun and kind of you will end up with a finished painting. So I'm going to grab some a complement of purple is yellow. And I'm going to mix up, in this case, I need to mix up a little puddle and I'm going to sprinkle it on my paper in kind of diagonal movement to, that will unite my birds a little bit. And I think gives the painting a little more finished look. Maybe orange. I love splattering watercolor. I think it can be used very effectively a lot of times. So so we give a little more movement to our painting, a little more visual interest, maybe even just a tad of small sprinkles. Okay, so this was my watercolor splattering fun for today. Wait for this to dry. Let me look at your comments, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, Michelle is joining from Australia. It's uh, really late there. That's dedication, guys. All right, um, dry brush effect on hot press paper. Yes, this will be trickier because part of this is the texture of cold press paper. So on hot press, I would think your brush will need to be almost dry to get this effect because paper is not helping you. Um, but I mean, you don't have to do dry brush on hot press. You, you can just paint, you know, uh, the texture. Uh, and try dry brushing on cold press, you know, on a different painting. I would just wanted you to know what, what, it, what it is and how to do it. Um, yes, we're painting with watercolors today. Somebody joined late and um, I didn't hear the beginning. So this is 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. This is not cotton. This is wood chip. This is Canson brand that comes in those blue uh, pads 
So any paper will work. This is just a freehand exercise to break us away from pencil drawing and from restraining us with pencil lines. And we're learning a brush control and watercolor control. So this is all watercolor. And I used uh, Dr. Paige Martin's uh, pen white ink to make tiny little corrections and additions to the painting. So if you paint at home, you don't have to use this big sheet of paper. You can just take your sketchbook or just a pad or watercolor and do like two, three birds on a page. It will all be fine. And if you do these exercises uh, on a regular basis, uh, maybe, you know, a couple times a week or at least once a week. And if you join me on Saturday mornings, I will be doing uh, more of this. Uh, I guarantee you that your brush control and your paint control, watercolor control will improve because you think it's very fun and simple and, you know, anybody can do this, but um, it's actually improving our hand-eye coordination, our muscle control, uh, our sight measuring skills because, you know, there is no pencil line, so we kind of have to constantly evaluate if this looks like the reference, if the angles, the distances are right. So, so many things, it improves so many things in us as artists. So, I guarantee you that there will be improvement if you stick with these exercises. Picking up some splatters from those crows, but even though they look okay, um, let me see any more comments. Yes, I, I told you about the white, right? This is my preferred one. I also have um, titanium white gouache from uh, M. Graham. That's the brightest white. There is also zinc white, but it's used mostly for mixing because it's not as bright as this. Gouache will behave differently on paper than white ink. I used gouache for a long time, but you kind of can see it. So if you need those highlights and white areas to have more texture, I would go with gouache. If you want white to blend with watercolor paper, I would go with uh, ink. And th I think there are separ uh, several different inks uh, that you can use, but I, I like this one. It's really opaque and uh, it goes on, it kind of sinks into paper fibers. Uh, so uh, this works really well. You can see it after it dries on watercolor paper. So these are the couple of options that I use. There is something that's called um, Chinese white, I think, or opaque white that comes with sets of watercolor. But um, that's, I think it's a little more transparent. So you might not get as good coverage as with gouache and white ink. Uh, I think that white is meant for mixing with watercolor, so it's not super opaque. But if that's all you have, you can give it a try as well. Maybe a couple layers will work for coverage. Um, Julie, the reference image is posted in my community tab. So if you click on my picture on the channel where the, you see Learn to Paint with Ksenia Anis, you will, it will take you to my channel. Uh, page and there are tabs and uh, I think the, the last or one before last tab says community and I post reference photos for each of these live sessions there and you can open the picture and right click on it and save it on your computer and print it or just look at it from there. I created that reference. I use Unsplash and Pixabay, those two websites to find free reference images. Uh, so I saved the bunch and I kind of put them in Photoshop all together uh, so I can, you know, print it out. So this is the picture you will have on my community. So it will be hard for me to give you all the reference, all the links, because I kind of made my own picture for this. Alrighty, let me see what other questions we have. Carol says, fabulous work thank you so much capture the shapes yes it's all about the shapes we need to break away from the lines and the details we need to see light mid-tone and dark shapes and then we're all good we can paint anything we want <laughs> thank you amber yes Please join me on Saturday mornings. I'm going to skip one before Halloween because I think everybody will be pay, uh, will be busy with family stuff and uh, 
uh, but besides that, I'm going to be here every Saturday. If you have time, please join me and we'll paint together. <laughs> crows in our cornfield, yes. I actually like crows. I think they're pretty striking birds. I know they can be pests sometimes, but they I like their shape. They're very interesting, very smart. The paint I'm using is um, mineral violet. This is Holbein. I just, I moved it out of my watercolor palette. I actually posted a video about updating my palette. So if you curious what colors I, I use, what, or what brands, uh, first of all, in the community section, I have a picture of this with all the colors named. And also I have a video where I show how to move colors on the palette because my palette is arranged according to the color wheel. And next Saturday, by the way, guys, we will be talking about painting with primary colors. So if you're a little rusty on color mixing and you want a little refresher, join me next Saturday at 10 US Central Time. So we will talk about, we will talk about fall colors and we will talk about um, mixing, mixing different colors from just primaries, from yellow, red, and blue. <laughs> Arlene says it's my regular Saturday hangout. Okay, I have something else to show you guys. Don't leave me yet. Uh, we're going to add, I think I answered all the questions, but now, you know, the moment of truth. We're going to add birds to a landscape. So here's my landscape. You might have seen it on my channel, how I painted it. I'm going to keep my reference in front of me. So why I'm talking about adding birds to a landscape? You know, this is a f f nice painting, nice landscape. I feel it lacks the visual interest a little bit. So there's just a line of trees. This water gives it a little bit of interest, but this is, by the way, handmade watercolor paper. See how thick and rough it is. So it's really interesting to paint on this. Uh, but I think a few smaller details can be actually beneficial to this landscape. So I'm going to add some birds. I'm going to grab my palette. The main color I used in this landscape was um, indigo. So let's get it started. I'm going to grab my dagger brush. It's covered with white ink, so I need to wash it. That white ink tends to stick to your brush a little bit, especially to the handle. So make sure after you're done painting, you clean your brushes really well and use uh, mild soap on them even to clean everything off. All right, let's see. So indigo and we will, let's see which ones I want to paint. Um, let's do the one with wings going down here. Yeah, the wing needs to be a lot longer. Okay, here's one. Uh, let's do maybe wings up over here. Trying to paint shapes and the wing is going to be pretty big. The paper is very rough, so I need a lot of paint and a lot of water to actually get into the, all the little crevices. I think I need to do a third one maybe. This one, this might not work, but we'll see. We can always lift paint, right? Just use some clean water. All right, so here are the birds made that <laughs> landscape even gloomier than it was, even moodier. But I think I think it improves actually the watercolor. So here are the birds. And you see how just adding those three little shapes really changed the 
a kind of our perception of this painting. So that's why I'm saying practicing birds is really useful. It's good for a lot of things, but it's also, you can actually use it in your paintings as well. All right, so um, tomorrow guys, look out for the new class. Let me just show you a couple of examples. I'm not going to show you everything. Um, where did I put those paintings? Oh, there they are. So, um, a fun little class about greeting cards. So we will talk about, I'm just making a few suggestions for paintings. This will be, you know, Halloween. And I explain how to use a photo and how to modify it and how to create a card really quickly in kind of realistic manner with watercolor, but in a very short period of time. All these were painted in like 15, 20 minutes. And if you have an assembly line going, you can do it very quickly. And I also have some kind of winter suggestions. The class is um, a little over an hour, so a lot of information in it. And it will be published tomorrow on my website. Um, here is something else from future. Um, YouTube live so we'll be painting some more fall motifs and I will also talk about how to turn it into a little card so so information and the class will go on my website and it will be on sale so take advantage of that guys so kseniaanias.com uh, and remember about Saturday mornings on my YouTube channel. So we will keep painting different interesting things. Let me check uh, the comments. Everybody's saying thank you. Okay, sounds like you guys are ready to paint some cards. Was, I think it makes a really special present, you know, for people. It's one thing to buy something, but it's quite different to make something with your own hands and um, it won't take that much time but you will have fun and the person who you give that card to really appreciate it so all right um, I think that's all I have for today guys if you post on social media your exercises or maybe you will decide to do a longer painting from one of the crows maybe uh, make sure to tag me my social media is uh, Tammy Rub Studio I'm everywhere on Instagram Facebook uh, I would love to see your paintings and hopefully you can join me next Saturday here on YouTube. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for joining me.